Kellogg Senior Fellow for Asia Pacific Security at the International Institute for Strategic Studies. I think it depends on whose Indo-Pacific concept you mean, and um, even under that, you know, what the Indo-Pacific concept would mean to that particular power. Uh, even within the United States, I think um, it's the Indo-Pacific concept is not all that clear. What its strategy means isn't all that clear. In part, it's a muscular response to uh, some of uh, the more worrying developments we're seeing in Asia, but in other respects, it's merely an emphasis on um, the need for a rules-based order and adherence to principles of international law and norms. So I think if we look at um, ASEAN's outlook on the Indo-Pacific, what do we see emerging from that? We see several things. The first, we see an emphasis on economic principles and the need for uh, connectivity. Second, we see um, while ASEAN has adopted Indo-Pacific terminology, it has also uh, talked about the imp importance of infrastructure, infrastructure development to ASEAN in a nod to China and its Belt and Road Initiative. And third, we see uh, great emphasis on uh, the importance of international law, including the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, uh, as well as the need to promote a rules-based order. I think Indonesia has been driving um, the ASEAN outlook in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, it's been supported by Thailand, but I think Indonesia has been the main player in this respect. I think part of the part of this is because uh, it sees the Indo and Indo-Pacific as a reference, uh, not um, not so much to the Indian Ocean and to India, but to Indonesia. So I think that plays on the mind a little bit of um, Indonesian policy makers. But I think the other reason for um, this emphasis on the Indo-Pacific or the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific has been a desire to ensure that um, the conversation on the Indo-Pacific or the shaping of, of the Indo-Pacific concept doesn't move ahead without ASEAN and ASEAN's input. ASEAN likes to talk about ASEAN centrality, but if we uh, talk about the Indo-Pacific and you know, you know, it, it's not to the Quad, for instance, and the four major powers underneath the Quad. Um, I think uh, ASEAN's in danger of being left behind, so I think this initiative from Indonesia as well as Thailand with eventual buy-in from the, from the rest of the ASEAN members has been very important to ensuring that ASEAN seeks to uh, retain some of its centrality as well as has a shape, say in shaping the concept so that it doesn't work against ASEAN's interests, in particular if it were to become an anti-China containment strategy.